Raghunath, are you ready for this? What? The wisdom of the sages' trainings that are going on. Where? At the Eco Village, the, the Govardhan Eco Village in India. Why? To totally transform your life spiritually. Who? Who? You, me, Radha Swami's gonna be there, other great teachers are gonna be there, lots of cool people. How? You go to wisdomofthesages.com slash events. You find all the information there. Hadi Bo. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to Walk On Thursday, Throwdown Thursday. We're going to bring some sage group leaders on. That was our That's our walk on. Mm-hmm. It's our, you know, usually we have a walk on Wednesday. We missed it because we wanted to wait for Throwdown Thursday. We're going to bring a few Sage Group leaders on. No, actually, uh, also Sage Group members as well. Oh, and Sage Group members also. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about the Sage Groups. That's a little extension, a little limb from Wisdom of the Sages that we got going. It's a very healthy limb, mm-hmm. matter of fact. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not what the other words for those limbs, Mara? Vestigial. It's not a vestigial limb. It's a very healthy <laughs> going to the gym thriving. limb. Thriving going limb we have limb. growing from us. <laughs> How are you? Any announcements, my friends? I stayed up very late. I just rolled out of bed. Before I rolled out of bed, I hit snooze two times. I'm a double snoozer today. Hmm. And so you're getting the unver- unshowered, you know. Um, unshowered. Unshowered, unshowered today. It's sad. I always shower before the show, but I'm just had no time. I needed to sleep. Okay. I went out. Right. I went out last Where night. Where were you out carousing so late at night last night? Brother? I went to Sachi Sutta's house. Sachi Sutta and Kaylee oh, invited me for I dinner. Saw a video. You were doing a little Dhamma Rasta to come together, thing. observing this yeah. beautiful Kartik month together. You no, know, it was it was actually very nice. I was thinking these Sachi and Kaylee, it's like they've made it. They've done it. You know, they've been married. They've stayed married. They raise kids. The kids are out of the house. And now there's just like they're just retiring. They're not retiring, but they're they're just like they're and they're still in the bhakti. They went through all the phases of Krishna consciousness Stuck with it, material life. And they're still devotees. You know, sometimes someone bails. I'm not into this or, you know, these guys have done it. They've made it through. I'm, I'm really impressed. And we just sat and we sang together and we ate, ate Prashad. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, Radha Pretty came and uh, it was good. Okay, but you got in late. But I got in late. Okay. You got in late. All right. Uh, Are there more announcements, Mara? Uh, well, we have a back to recovery group meeting at noon today. And that's All it. Right. That's good. Oh, you know, we could announce uh, this. Oh, you know, there's an announcement. Uh, I should try to pull it up. We got, a, you know, uh, Urban Davy coming up this weekend. Oh, Sunday. Yeah, that's coming up Sunday. Maybe you can mention the time and all that if you remember that kind of detail. I think it's at 11 a.m. through the bhaktisunner.org. Okay, okay, I got it right here. Let's see. Um, so this Sunday is Urban Davy. Urban Davy is just like a excellent monthly, well, it's bigger than this, but they do this monthly program um, for the Bhakti Center at from 11 till 12.30 Eastern time uh, for ladies, right? Urban Davies, for mm-hmm. the Davies out there. And this this week's speaker is none other than Guru Charna Padma Devi Dasi, who is Genevieve's mother, right? Ah. But here's a person talk about going through all the different stages and phases and sticking with it, you know. Here's someone that goes way back, you know. This is she's a beautiful woman who's done she's done so much um, amazing service, you know, in the fields of education and so on, and been practicing bhakti for for so long, and also raised you know beautiful children and, and now so she's on. got grandchildren now she's got grandchildren yeah so she's got Sachi and Kaylee by that she's in the next phase grandchildren yeah so it doesn't seem like there was a they didn't give a subject or topic devotional literature 
practical strategies and realizations. So she'll be speaking on that. So that's for all the ladies. It's free of charge. You go to bhaktisenter.org and you look for Urban Davy. And uh, I think that's under their, like their, their um, online events. And uh, check it out this Sunday. All right. Yeah. Do we have a guest lined up for Sunday? And that's another that? thing. Yeah. And we've got Divya coming on. She's got a brand new cookbook out. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah, um, Bobby marchand has been making these. Uh, um, what are they, Mara? Those potatoes? Oh, pesto those potatoes. potatoes with the kale pesto. Oh, my God. So that's good. from her cookbook. I was like, where did you get this? You should write a cookbook. And she's like, I got it from Bob. I got it from Divya's cookbook. Is it a new cookbook? Is that from the new one? Actually, yeah, she got the new one. Yeah, the new one is really nice. So uh, we're going to have her talk about Ayurveda, talk about the cookbook, talk about all the stuff that she's got going on. So that's a Sunday. All right. That's great. Let's do it. All right. All right. So how are we doing this next part of the uh, intro here? Well, so yeah, so today is like our walk on or throw down or whatever you want to call it. And, you know, we're, we're coming up to a point where our the sage sage groups, we began our sage groups in the second <clears throat> phase of them. It was in July, I believe, and it was like a 16 week kind of session where, you know, people join different groups. These are discussion groups where people get together every week. They're provided with a topic and some notes based on something that we discussed on the show in the previous week, you know, and uh, each group has a leader that just kind of basically a facilitator of the conversation. It's a discussion. It's not so much a study. It, there's definitely a study aspect to it, but it's more about having a little community of people, six or seven people that you get together with once a week and you discuss bhakti, you discuss your life, you discuss what you're going through, you ask your questions, you share, you share your experiences in trying to practice this. A lot of people uh, in the sage groups are relatively new to this and looking for some sangha, looking for some association. Others are, you know, more seasoned at practicing bhakti, but also, you know, appreciate having like a little a little sangha, a little weekly group meeting. You check in, you check out, you discuss together. And mm. people are finding it really helpful. You know, A little breakaway pod. A little, a little breakaway, breakaway pod. pod. Yeah. And, yeah. And you make some friends. There's a bit of mentorship if you're looking for that. Um, but it, it, it kind of keeps you, it keeps your, your flame burning there, you know? And so it's been great for people. And so if you're if you've heard about it and if you're curious about it, like they're talking about this thing, if you're so you know, some people listen to a podcast, not every day. I see these yeah. faces every day. Jimmy James, Banjo Mike, you know, uh, Kylie Brown. You see the same faces every day. But there's certain people who just like I listen to Wisdom of Sages like once a month or even a part of it on the way to work. But you don't like listen. They're not like a regular. They're just like they're like the. um distant satellite others they're just like floating in space you well, so if you've heard about us mentioned sage groups now we're going to like you're going to get we're going to talk to yeah. some sage group leaders and some say we call them sagelings sagelings i like yeah. that word it's one of the funky words i, I didn't make up I'm generally the <laughs> i'm generally the founder of funky words on the show that you that's my job description i create the funky funny titles but kostub i think came up with sagelings i didn't actually that was that was uh Ananda, you know, uh, Virgil Hari's wife, who's also a sage group leader. I think it was oh. she that, was it her? It was another sage group leader. I'll find out who's came up with it. All right. It may have been Charnagati that came up with it. I'm not sure. I think it was. All right. Anyway, it's one of some. Um, so, yeah. So, but the point is we started a 16 week session in June and I think we're 12 weeks in. So, you know, in about a month or so, you know, we'll be entering the third session where, and we encourage people to move around the groups. Like, you know, like if you're in this person's group, this session, maybe move meet to new another friends, group. Meet, meet new, new friends. people, make new friends, branch out like that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, there's a wide variety of groups and with a wide variety of leaders. I think we have about like 38 groups now or something like that in mm. different time slots. Mm. Um, some of them are groups like some are women's groups, some are men's groups. You got uh, LGBTQ groups, you got um, parenting groups, you got uh, addiction related groups, all different kind of groups. Hmm. All right. But let's let's get it started here. Why don't we start with Parmananda, who's a sage group leader? Can we unmute Parmananda? Yes. And let's bring him on. Harry Bowl, Harry Bowl. There he is. Hey, Parmananda, Harry Bowl. Good morning, Farman. Well, good to see you guys. Good to see you. We just, you know, um, we've had you on as a guest host. We've had you on as an interview uh, guest. 
but uh, this morning we just want to hear a little bit from you from the perspective of uh, being a Sage Group leader. And, uh, you know, what do you do and how's your experience been? Well, I have the great good fortune of leading the Krishna Core Sage Group. Oh, that's right, the Krishna Core Crew. <laughs> and it's and a really. You got, invite, you got to invite me in sometime. I oh, yeah. want to invite you in. Everybody's right. a, everybody's asking about um, shelter songs and what inspired them. So I want to have you. You're invited. On, All right. on Rago as a guest. All right, let's do um, it. I, uh, you know, this, this is my second Sage Group that I've done. The first yeah. one wasn't a, wasn't a Krishna Core Group. But I find these age groups so wonderful. You know, mm -hmm. not only are they, they're wonderful for me as a sage group leader, um, just to kind of meet all these people and hear all the experiences that they've gone through, you know, in their, in their bhakti. And I really see how it's helpful for people, especially new people. Um, we're kind of, you know, both my groups are kind of like a, a rogue group. We don't really follow the, <laughs> We don't really follow. You don't the, follow the notes. No, we don't follow the notes. We're we're off in our own thing. Yeah, they, they are rogue. <laughs> we're out. We're outlaws. We're outlaws. <laughs> okay. but, um, that, I, that email comes in from Costuba. You're like, Dilly, <laughs> yeah. little trash can. <laughs> We've got this covered, Costuba. Thank you. Like, you know, I just I just find personally, I just find that you know people have so many questions. That you, first of all, when you have these when you have these small groups, they become a very intimate group. After three mm. or four weeks, you're best friends with everybody. Wow. You feel very comfortable with everybody. You feel very vulnerable with everybody. And so, there's a lot of questions that people wouldn't necessarily ask on like a, you know, a Saturday. Right. Um, uh -huh. And I, I find that so important. You know, that people have this, you know, uh, forum where they can you know, ask things and discuss things, discuss their challenges in, in spiritual life. You know, a lot of times, in, you know, uh, you know, the, the good thing about the internet and, you know, Zoom things is that there's so much opportunity for things to come in. Mm. You know, you can go on YouTube, you can listen to Radhana Swami class, you can listen to this class, Bhagavad Gita class, there's so much stuff out there. Yeah. But there's not so many avenues for you to give that you know come in but there's not right. so many avenues for you to you know go outward you know, yeah so mm -hmm. what's from your heart and your struggles and things like that so i find that that takes up a lot of time you know people mm -hmm. just have so much to talk about in their own lives and questions and you know things that are coming up for them um so usually we just ha have it as a as a discussion like that and I can see that it's so valuable for people. Mm. I, will, I want to go to the Krishna Core cry session, just like <laughs> when they're all vulnerable. This is what I'm going through, Krishna Core guys. There is, there, there is some. A few I tears, a few tears sometimes. I, I, I remember when I told, uh, you know, we started out the group, how you got into bhakti. And when I told my story, there was practically <laughs> some tears going on. <laughs> um, but but it's, it's, it's nice, too, that the way that it's set up is... You have all these different kinds of, you know, I was a little, all these different kinds of groups. And I was a little hesitant to do a Krishna core group because I didn't want to just sit around and talk about like, oh, the, the Cro-Mags and Harley <laughs> and, you know, uh, Vraj Kishore and you want to wait and all this and all this stuff. But okay. um, I really find that it's great because you have all these different kinds of sage, sage groups. And even in Bhakti, you really just have to find your tribe. You just mm -hmm. have to find people that you just kind of relate to and that, you know, and that you feel Great comfortable point. and you and you speak the same language. So we're not sitting around talking about hardcore, you know, every week. But I find that just because we all have similar backgrounds. Um, There's an ease a, to the relationships it, it, going on. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I think um, people have find that people in the group have found that invaluable, I think. And that's great. You know, and for those that don't know, Krishna core refers to a specific sub branch of a sub branch of, of a sub branch <laughs> of rock and roll, I guess. <laughs> but, but yeah, like this uh, punk rock music that's uh, centered around Bhakti. And so that's what that group is. Okay. Parman, thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you so much for leading a group. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to us.
Thank uh, you. It, mean, Thank it you. means a lot to me too. Yeah. So I, said I think us. it might mean more to me because you were saying that. <laughs> yeah, all, all right. glories yeah. to the Krishna Core Sage Group. Hare Krishna, Krishna Core Sage Group. And now, why don't we hear from a Sage Ling, the bright light of Vermont, Jyoti oh, Ma? Oh, she's not a Sage Group leader. She's a Sage Ling. She's a Sage Ling. She's a Sage oh. Group member. Yeah. Okay, Kelly, Kelly Skinner, the bright light of Vermont. What's it like? What group are you in? Hare Krishna, Hare Bol. I am. Morning. I'm a proud, proud Sage Ling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have a little um, pride first, parade for you. <laughs> <laughs> first, I just want to offer my obeisances and gratitude uh, to both Raghunath Kastuba and Mariji, sweet, sweet Mariji, for p- providing this space for us every day. We're and not so sweet. Her, she gets two sweets and, and the two of us Mar- don't even get one. <laughs> Mar- I mean, okay. we're very sweet, sweet so. too, but Mary's is <laughs> double sweet. All right. um, so... Yeah, the sage groups. I'm I feel like I've I don't remember life before a sage group. I was also in the pilot sage group. Um yeah. and I'm actually in the same group. So the I don't sage. know what, what that Your is. Your group is, is that- never gonna break up. You you guys are gonna stay together no matter well, how much we encourage you. Well, I will take instruction. I will take <laughs> I will take in- <laughs> direction. However, this time around we, we stay together and we are a women's, we are one of the, the women's mm-hmm. sage groups. And, but this time around, we actually have a male bodied. Um, I think that was by mistake. Like, I, I, right, what, what's his name? His name's Bailey. And maybe, and maybe amazing. that oh, they thought that Bailey could be a woman's name. Go either way. And I think yeah. Bailey got into the women's group, but like, like he was accepted, right? right? He, he was so accepted. accepted. We love Bailey. So <laughs> okay. much. And I hope he loves us too. I think so. I think he does. I think it's mutual. Um, and, you know, what Paramananda was just saying about how there's this, this like intimacy within it. And a large part of um, the group is sharing and right. One of the six instructions of, from the mm. next instruction is sharing. Changes of love. Yes. Changes it's of exciting. love yeah. and sharing your heart and confidence. And yeah. I absolutely feel that it's a, um, a space where if you're struggling with something in your life, whether it be with bhakti or personal life, it's a place where, um, all of us can come together and and talk about that and from a bhakti perspective right the mm-hmm. feedback that you get it's it's like ragu says right for, your friends are not those that commiserate with you but they're they're the ones that will like uplift you right or and and actually give you advice or guidance that will serve you in in your spiritual life right so, down Kastuba. that's a quote from me she just quoted me okay yeah. Um, well, <laughs> and so Banu Nandini is our sage group leader who is great, oh, just she's phenomenal. Great. And we've had um Maharaj Sachinanda Swami come in a few times because of a few times. Wow, look at you, that's a special well, group. To I should speak twice, so okay. a couple, a couple, couple times, a couple times. Is- um, be clear, immaculate with my words. So, <laughs> yeah, it it's um you know, another testament of the power of bhakti and how it transforms our hearts and especially when associating with devotees. And I live in Vermont, as you all know, mm-hmm. and um, I have an incredible budding community here, but not, you know, devotees in in the making. And so it's been so important to me to, to be around other devotees who are way more advanced than me. And so I can grow and learn and um, be held accountable in a really mm-hmm. beautiful, loving way. So I sure. highly, 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 highly recommend everyone get in the Sage group. Flood yeah. when the when the when the signups are open, the flood the email chain. And, <laughs> okay. And, yeah. uh, Make it hard for us. <laughs> and get in. Now, now is there a lot of crying going on in that group too, tell the truth. Yeah, you know, it's one of those it it comes and goes. Like okay. I cried, <laughs> I cried two weeks ago. I didn't cry this week. Someone else okay. cried this week. It's sort <laughs> of like yeah, but Not but we crying. do, but we do, Kastuba, follow the the notes. So okay. we initially we would start with sharing, and then we would like share for so long that we didn't get to read. So we flipped it this time, where we read and do the notes pr- usually first. Mm. Okay. And I love the discussions, which often really inspire what I share with my sangha here in Vermont. Mm. Um, and then we share so that we we have space. And Kylie is in my group as well, and she has. Oh the most stunning, one of the most stunning channeled Krishna voices and she'll chant our opening prayers for us. And just this 
incredible, um, incredible little family. And then we see each other at Wisdom of the Sages. We've never all been together in one place, but we've many of us have been together in like little pockets yeah, and we can right. pictures of each other of where whenever we're together. And yeah, it's it's a beautiful sisterhood um and brotherhood. With one brother in there. Yeah. With one <laughs> Just brother in sisterhood. Um, I was like already to show join... Mahadev. He's like, it comes in there. <laughs> I was ready to join Parmananda Sage Group. Now I want to join Kelly Skinner Sage Group. <laughs> Who else well, you got you... here? Well, well, Beth comes in in a sorry. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank, thank you so much, much Kelly. Thank you, Bright Light. Very bold. Now this we want to check. Sounds good. I'm sounds inspired. Good. Now we got, you should do a sage group every day, Raghunath. You're like a I would like guy. to do a sage yeah. group in person where we wrestle first. That's how we break the, <laughs> get the edge off. I want Jeff Eisenberg in that group. We just wrestle, slug it out on the mat. And then, then that really opens you up. You can just share your heart with those you okay. wrestle with. Now we want to check in with another sage group leader or two. Up to sage her. Group okay. um, but th that is our very own Mara. Mara is a sage group leader. Oh. Imagine the people that get into her group. You know, people are like I want to be in Mary's group. Who can like get into her brain? What's ticking in there? What's making her show up on a regular basis every day? I don't know if that's the point to the group. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Mary, do you want? To, are you bringing in your co-host, Bobby? Or? Yeah. Well, I'm super blessed that I get to co-lead it with one of yeah. my best friends, Bobby. Mm -hmm. She's here too. I think. Are you unmuted, Bobby? I am. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's Bobby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Hi, Bobby. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you, Paul? So, so thank you, Rodney. To... Thank you, Kastuba. Thank, thank you, you Mara, uh, thank for you. making all this possible. Oh, come on. And so I want you to share a bit about uh, your own group and your own experiences. Bobby, you want to go first? Sure. Um, it's, I mean, echoing what has been said so far, um, it's to see... Um, to not see, to feel the connections growing is really, really beautiful. And um, I, uh, it's, I remember being in the kitchen at the farm and Lori Pag's husband walked in. Mm -hmm. Lori Pag is in our group. She Pag. And so, like, I see Lori Pag every week, but then, like, it's the way the Sage group. It was proof how the sage group ripples out. Hmm. And so Lori's in our group, but I see her husband, Jay Bags, <laughs> knowing earlier in the week that Lori had spoken to how excited she was that maybe her husband was going to come to the farm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was so cool to like see that, like the, the ripple effect. So in other words, you're developing deeper relationships with, a yeah. group of people absolutely and yeah. also just the way you know um like so we've got Lori in the states we've got anna in colombia we've got edward in oh, Canada. Got anna mm. yeah that's a pretty good yeah. group. right we've got sarah worth who's owning a retreat who owns a retreat center we've got yvette who's also upstate danny k um Lolita kishori comes in so Oh, I want to join um, this sage group. Yeah, yeah, group. Awesome. This is the sage group. This is the it's one. It's so awesome. And, and Kelly Becker, too. And Kelly Becker. He wants to get into Kelly this Becker. group. He wants to get into the hardcore yeah. group. He wants to get into the women's group. He wants to get into the LGBTQ <laughs> group. He wants to get into the... <laughs> But Mara's in charge. I'll have to submit to Mara's authority if I join the group. <laughs> we'll need to see your application. That's what, right. what, have, what have been your experiences, Mara? Um, yeah, well, I echo what other people have said as well, but, you know, I found that our Sage group is just a really nice, like, you know, we have such a nice small community and it's like, I've been going through a hard time lately. Bobby's been going through a hard time lately. And it's just like super helpful to have people there to share with and also just to be really supportive. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like Bobby was saying, people are from sort of all different walks of life, different places in the world, different ages, different experiences. So it's just helpful for um, to hear from them. Hmm. So. You know, maybe, maybe uh, here's my little sociological uh, guesswork here, but, you know, maybe just the way the world works now, you know, where uh, families are, you know, you don't grow up in these kind of extended families, you know, like everybody's separate. You, you kind of just need people that you can share, intimately share your heart with, you know, it's like, maybe people need that a little bit more. Maybe these sage groups are 
this part of the reason why they're they're helpful. But again, in the context of bhakti, right? <clears throat> Mm-hmm. It's all discussed in the context of this wisdom tradition. So it kind of, I, I think it's helping people make it, make the practice come alive in their life, you know, in a dynamic way. Well, thank you, Mara. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Parmananda. Mm-hmm. Thank you, everyone. Um, as we mentioned, it'll be in about four weeks or so. You know, as we build up to that time, we'll be sharing more information about uh, new groups. We're going to expand the groups and then everyone will have a chance to shuffle around into different groups too. But uh, if you're not in a group now and you'd like to be, information will be coming about how you can join a group. So it won't be long. All right. Good, Raghu. Impressive. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tatoja yamudiriyat. Before we start in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prayeshva badrishu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. By regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated and loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakya Chaksurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes with the torch light of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Mara, where are we at, old sage group leader? Reading from Canto 4, Chapter 27, Text 21. Should we have a little recap, brother? Yeah, I was. We were we were at the point of uh, Jara. Yeah, remember Jara, which Jara. is disease. Act, actually, old I messed age. up. Yeah, old age really is more accurate because Vyadi is disease. Right? Okay, Janma Mrityu Jara Vyadi. Yeah, so Jara is old age. Mm. All right, catch us up, please. Well, so so this analogy, this allegory that we're going with now, you know, it, it's kind of illustrating how in our ignorance of our higher spiritual nature. We're seeking happiness through external things, you know, pursuing the desires of the mind and the, the programming within the mind and the senses. Whether that, and again, whether that may be through moral decadence or through some kind of like pious approach to material enjoyment, um, but that's that's where that's where we are, and that's where the king is at, right? And but the point that's arising now is even if we're relatively successful at that at that you know even if we're uh enjoying this world the fact is time is creeping up on us right time assisted by the days that the passing days and nights is attacking our very the city of our body or you could say our very life airs right so that was the five-headed snake in the in the, the, the the life airs and it's being attacked and and along with that attack comes anxiety right so it's saying these are practically inescapable elements of this world. Step back, think about it. Think about if, if there's a message here. If the, you know, we were saying yesterday, we were hearing from the uh, Australian Aboriginals, you know, first you observe, right? And then you learn, and through that you should grow, you know? And, and so we should all step back and look at life like this, see that this is what happens, and and then think deeply. You know, is there no purpose to this? Is there no, are, are we like nihilists and believe that, you know, well, this is just happens and there's no meaning to it? Or is there a meaning to it? Or are we meant to, to, you know, learn and grow through it? Are we in some kind of like Groundhog Day type scenario, you know, where it's like we're, we're going through a repetition life after life where there's lessons that we're meant to learn and what are those lessons? And mm-hmm. so it's saying, hey, wake up see that see that there's these patterns that that every living being is going through and that we you know we suffer in this world for sure and then we see that you know time comes and takes away everything you know um uh old age comes disease comes anxiety comes because we're attached to the body because we're following the dictation of the mind and senses is there an alternative to this? And what is that alternative? So that's kind of what this is all meant to be illustrating through this um, analogy. And now we have the king 
He first he tried to King Perunjana first he tried to enjoy through decadence. He it wore him out. He came crawling back to his queen, who represents his dharmic intelligence, materialistic dharmic intelligence. He's now follow, reunited with her. He's following a pious life of materialism. He's enjoying it, but now time is starting to attack his city, right? Now fear is starting to set in. And the next character that steps in in, in text 19, maybe we could read it again, is Jara, which means old age, right? Old age comes with time. They're, they're linked together, right? So, so it's kind of like personifying these different elements in life. So uh, text 20 or my, text 19? Well, why don't you go ahead and read 19 again? Uh, my dear, my dear King Prachini Barishat, at that time, the daughter of formidable time, seeking her husband throughout the three worlds, uh, was seeking her husband throughout the three worlds. Although no one agreed to accept her, she came. So this no is idea. no one wants her. No one wants old age to come <laughs> and old age is here. Yeah. And daughter of time, Jara, was very unfortunate. Consequently, she was known as Durbaga, ill fated. However, she was once ple- she, she was once pleased with a great king, and because the king accepted her, she granted him a great benediction. Do you when know what I, that's referring to? No, it's like an analogy within an analogy. Well, it's just it's just a little side note, but that's referring to um, later in the ninth canto. Remember the story of Puru? Oh yeah, who had a father who who was his body was growing old and. He wanted to continue to enjoy the body, and his son Poor accepted his own oh, old age. Right. Yes. So that's it's just referring to that it refers story. Refers to the Bhagavatam in the Bhagavatam. Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> when I once it. came to this earth from Brahma Loka, the highest now, now planet- Narada speaking. When I once came to this earth from Brahma Loka, the highest planetary system, mm-hmm. the daughter of time, wandering over the universe, met me. Knowing me to be an avowed brahmachari, she became lusty and proposed that I accept her. Mm. So, so, so here's, we're getting like, um, through these next few verses, it's kind of showing how if someone is um, a Vaishnava, if someone is self-realized, someone is deeply spiritually realized, mm-hmm how even though time's trying to unite with them or like old age is trying the, the pain the sufferings of of time and old age and so on that the vaishnava is immune to them mm. it's not that their body doesn't experience these things but they're beyond it they, they transcend it and so in a sense they're immune to it so narada being that you know practically bhakti personified you know um jara comes to him but he's like unaffected by it Okay, all right. Text 22. The great sage Narada continued. When I refused to accept her request, she became very angry at me and cursed me severely. Because I refused her request, she said that I would not be able to stay in one place for a long time. So Narada is always on the move. Mm -hmm. It was twice he was cursed like that. A double curse. Yeah, but uh, for him it's not, and that's another example where like for him even being cursed, when you're, when you're, when you're God conscious, when you're Krishna, when you're experiencing the bliss of bhakti, even the curse is like, is, turns into a blessing for you. Yeah, I, I, I once was upset about, you know, I was trying to find a place to live, a tr- trying to find a place to do super soul. And me and my wife were sort of complaining to Radhanath Swami. And I was like, yeah, we're struggling with the place to live. And we had a place, but it wasn't the place we wanted and like that. And he goes, I think you're asking the wrong person for advice. He goes, I haven't had a place to live my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> right, but yeah. yeah, there's, you have to find comfort somewhere else. Approaching the king of the, uh, okay. After she was thus disappointed by me, with my permission, she approached the king of the Yavanas. Mm-hmm. Yavanas are sort of like an outcast meat eater society. It's part of just a way of illustrating that nobody wants old age, right? Nobody's saying, hey, I want old age, mm. right? So she's looking for someone to unite with, but everybody is, you know, she's having a hard time finding anyone willing. And this person's name was Baya or Fear. Oh, that's so that's right. So generally with old age comes fear. 
she accepted him as her husband. So fear and old age, they have a tendency to ha go hand in hand. But he won't quite accept. He accept he's not going to accept her as a wife, but he's going to accept her into the family. Okay. Approaching the king of the Avanas, Kalakanya. Kalakanya literally, the, Kalakanya is the same person here, Jara or old age, but Kalakanya means like, literally like time girl, right? But like here we're saying the daughter of time, right? Time born girl. from born from time is old age. Hmm. Approaching the king of the Avanas, Kalakanya addressed him as a great hero saying, my dear sir, you are the best of the untouchables. I am in love with you <laughs> and I want you as my husband. I know that no one is baffled if he makes friends with you. One who does not give charity according to the customs or injunctions of the scriptures, and one who does not accept charity in that way are considered to be in the mode of ignorance. Such persons follow the path of the foolish. Surely they must lament at the end. So that's kind of saying, uh, dharmically, you're bound to accept me, I think is what she's saying. Oh, Kala Kanya continued. Oh, gentle one, I'm now present before you to serve you. Please accept me and thus show me mercy. It is a gentleman's greatest duty to be compassionate upon a person who is distressed. Mm. After hearing the statement of Kalakanya, the daughter of time, the king of the Yavanas began to smile and devise a means for executing his confidential duty on behalf of Providence. Yes. Then he addressed Kalakanya as follows. So, so what's going to happen now is Kalakanya is going to recognize that there's a perp that that old age can serve a purpose, right? Hmm. That the, the the appearance of old age is like an impetus for spiritual life. It can be, right? As hmm. we start to grow older, we can say, okay, yeah, you know what? This, my my plans for material enjoyment, if it, you know, if I'm realistic, they're slipping away, and I, I ought to look for something deeper in life. Hmm. So people naturally fear impending death, and the king of the Avanas is trying now to utilize Kalakanya, or utilize old age for this purpose. The king of the Avanas replied, after much consideration, I have arrived at a husband for you. Actually, as far as everyone is concerned, you are inauspicious and mischievous. Since no one likes you, how can anyone accept you as his wife? She's got a tough life. Yeah, no one, no one wants to no be old one. age. <laughs> Nobody likes me. Yeah. This world is a product of fruit of activities. Therefore, you may imperceptibly attack people in general. Helped by my soldiers, you can kill them without opposition. Mm -hmm. The king of the Avanas continued, here is my brother, Prajvara. Pra mm -hmm. Prajvara, I now accept you as my sister. I shall employ both of you, as well as my dangerous soldiers, to act imperceptibly within this world. So they have, so fear is engaging disease and prajvara is Prajvara means like the fever of death wow but yeah and but then the, the and the soldiers are disease wow <laughs> okay so this is you know it, it, in one sense it sounds like um it would make an interesting cartoon or something like that right you know like the cavity creeps or something like that <laughs> the cavity creeps yeah crash 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 but um but 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 really it's just it's 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 just you know an allegorical way of saying hey we all our bodies are all being attacked by these things you know mm -hmm. old age is coming to us all disease is coming to us all um we're, we are being attacked and are we do and, and are we um kind of like you know one of those cities that's just not prepared for the attack you know we're kind of like partying while while the city's you know are we fiddling while Rome is burning or whatever? Or are we aware? You know, are, are, are we are we finding a type of shelter? Can we find a shelter um, where even if the body goes down, which it will, that we're not affected, that the self is mm. not affected, that the self doesn't become overwhelmed by anxiety, the self doesn't, no, rather the self finds truth, finds actually the deeper bliss. You know, we always share that story. I, I always share that story in any case. To me, it's, it's such a such a nice clear illustration from a person that you and I know in life you know who faced death um with such deep realization not not beyond realization beyond even fearlessness who but faced it with deep inner spiritual bliss who Bhakti Tirtha Swami oh 
Yes. Right. Who's who's Quite you know who, who is this again a person that was uh, like a senior monk when Raghunath and I were coming up as monks, right? Uh, beautiful man, you know, um, who who gave his life to the practice of bhakti, and um, and towards you know I, I suppose he must have been boy not much older than us when he passed away. If right? that, yeah, yeah, if that. All the elders back then were young. Yeah. It was a very young society. Well, let's say he's probably yeah. like 15 to 20 years older than us. And, and that, he passed away 15 or 20 ago. years ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah, I, yeah. I saw him. Uh, maybe 15 I years ago. I saw him when he had cancer. I, I visited him. Yeah. And that was, uh, let's see. It was before. He was 55. We, he was 55. So he was younger than us when he passed away. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I saw him in 2003. Or 2004, right around that. Okay. So when he was 54, 55, he was diagnosed with cancer in his foot, some very aggressive form of cancer. And um, the, the doctors are more or less advised, if you're going to survive, you need to actually amputate. This is such an aggressive form of cancer. You need to actually amputate your foot, like, right away. Wow. And so you know, nobody wants to hear that. Right, that's another that's thing that nobody wants to marry to, to. Yeah, like, well, that's that Vyadi, that's disease, right? One right. of the soldiers is coming, attacking his body, attacking his, his city. But he was okay with it. He said, okay, well, if that's what I need to do to, you know, my body isn't my body. This is a vehicle for my service, right? The body, the, my body is a vehicle for devotional service. That's a postulate right there, right? And, my body is a devotional My maybe, body's maybe, yes, postulate four. Postulate four. Okay, postulate. Right. Thank you. Give it a random number. <laughs> <laughs> Thought about it. So, Four so he, he with a deep realization, cultivated through years of 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 devotional service of bhakti, he had no problem conceiving of this as my body is a vehicle for devotional service, and he he accepted. Okay, if that's what it's going to take, go ahead and amputate the foot. And shortly after that, they found that the entire leg had been afflicted. Oh. They amputated the leg. He was okay with that too. And then shortly after that, they they said, actually, your entire body is, you know, is, is being overrun by this disease. Uh, and and I'd imagine they they put forward different, you know, treatments that he could do to try to live longer. But he said, no, I accept it. You know, I you know my body's been useful for service, and now you know I've also you know he was like a a guru. He had disciples and followers and so on. He said, you know, I've used this body to serve and now, you know, I'll continue to use it to serve even through death. If Now I've, I've tried to show an example of how to live as a, as a spiritually aware person. And now I'll show how to die as a spiritually aware person. And he went to the farm where you lived for some time, Parmananda lived in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, the Gita Nagari farms, like a, bhakti, a, a farm community dedicated to, to practicing bhakti. And he spent his last days there um blissfully right and and we would see i also visited him at that time he was you know he, he, he you know in his healthy state he was this beautiful you know bright uh shining person and now his body was withering away he had lost a leg he was all emaciated uh in great physical pain actually but blissful spirits and radna swami who was with him in his very final days tells that story about how they were chanting japa together, right? Chanting their mantras on their beads together. And at one point, uh, and, and I think this might have been like the day before he passed away, where he's, ex you know, extremely gaunt and, you know, and, and uh, you know, looking like a, a person that's going to pass away at any moment. And he turned to Radha Swami in the midst of his chanting these mantras. And Radha Swami said, it wasn't just like he was crying, like regular tears, but like, syringe what yeah like syringes were squirting out of it like if water was just pouring out of his face and he had this massive bright smile a smile like he had never seen before in his life mm. and he said these words to radna swami he said he said maharaj swamiji life just doesn't get any better than this Right. Life just doesn't get any in the exact moment where most people would say life just doesn't get any worse. 
right? How can it get worse? What have I done to deserve <laughs> yeah, this? Can it get any worse? Right? He was saying life just doesn't get any better than this. Although the city was separated. going down. You know, yeah. you know, they have, they use this analogy of like the the um, coconut. If you put it in the oven, you know, after you drain it, it, it makes the meat separate from the body. It dries out on the inside. It dries out on the inside. And, it, and it's like the practice of bhakti over the years, if not over the lifetimes, with the mercy of the guru. It's like you've separated yourself from your external reality. You see yourself now as com something completely different. All the talking and all the shlokas and all the mm. all the mantras have now come to fruition. And I'm actually actualizing myself as a being separate than this external world. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world any longer. And that's why when everything's crumbling around you, you can you've actually done the work to get your and got the grace to get out of this like enmeshment with matter. How cool. Mm. So, you know, in, in the, his example, what he said in his words in, in that circumstance that he was in, and, you know, it wasn't just words, right? Like that smile and those tears pouring out, it was, you know, it wasn't like he was putting on a show. You know? No. It was, no. it was something very real. And, um, and it, that example always reminds me of, of the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, you know, where, where it's describing a, a perfected yogi. And it says that this perfection is characterized by one's ability to see the self, right? The mm. true self, not the body, but the soul. To see the self by the pure mind, a mind, you know, unafflicted by all kind of false programming, right? I am this body, I am this, I am that. So you see the self by the pure mind and you relish and rejoice in the self. In that joyous state, one is situated in boundless, transcendental happiness realized through transcendental senses established thus one never departs from the truth and upon gaining this they think there's no greater gain right life just doesn't get any better than this being situated in such a position one is never shaken even amidst the greatest difficulty this is this indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact right so this is why Nard is sharing the story with the king. He's saying the way that you're living is you are making yourself vulnerable to fear, you know, vulnerable to the, that all that comes with time, you know, old age, disease, death. You're going to sit here and you're going to you're going to be terrified when those attack your city unless you develop a higher state of realization. And you can do that. You know, you can like you can let go of, of fear. If you if you if you practice this, if you contemplate this, if you realize this, uh, you know you can even face life's greatest difficulties, not be shaken, and in the midst of them, think there's no greater gain. Life just doesn't get any better than this. That's that's yoga. That's where yoga is meant to take you. Yeah. Not backbending postures. Hmm? Not <laughs> there's nothing wrong with a backbending posture, but it's not the goal. Someone put a, put someone put the last kirtan of Bhakti Tirta Swami in the chat board. Maybe Mara, you could save wow. that and put it in the show notes for the others. Would that work? Can oh, you do that? Yeah, she could do that. Sure. Let's do that. This there's a video of the last kirtan. Okay. You can see his joy and surrender. Lee says, "Thanks, Beautiful. Lee, for sharing that." Um, Mara, do you have any takeaway goodies for our goody lunch, our goody pail today? <laughs> We need a goodie pal to take through the day. When things get tough, I want to reach in that goodie pal and I want to, oh, that was a relief. I had this in my goodie pal. What do you got for me, Mara? Wake up. Time is creeping up on us. Oh, that's right. That's a goodie. <laughs> Vaishnavs transcend the pain and suffering of old age and disease. That's a goodie. Mm -hmm. Even curses can be blessings. Goody, goody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nobody wants to marry old age or disease. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm weird like that. <laughs> postulate four. My body is a vehicle for devotional service. That's yep. Right. Postulate four. The practice of bhakti and the mercy of guru separates us from our external reality. Hmm. Hmm. Is that the coconut shell thing? Yeah. Okay. It is. Coconut. Old age can be an impetus for our spiritual life. Coconut smoothie. <laughs> life just doesn't get any better than this. 
and join a sage group join a sage group join a sage group woohoo krishna core sage group come join krishna core sage group and cry <laughs> that's the emo group that's the e <laughs> <laughs> They're just crying. They can't even get a word in. They just, as soon as you log in, they're just. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us, including Mallory and Catherine A., who joined us late. <sighs> it keeps going every day. Sri Bhagavatam. I was just saying on the way home last night, I was like, thank God for Wisdom of the Sages. Um, we need we need to find our tribe. I think that's a big takeaway, too. That's a find big Find your deal. tribe? You got, you got to find your tribe and you got to find your service in Bhakti. Mm. Oh, these are the things we got to find. Okay. We got to put that together. The things, things you need you to gotta, find. Things you got to find. You got to find, you got to find your tribe. teachers. You got to find your tribe and you got to find your, your service. service because without your service, you can get into all this stuff. You can get initiated and you can, you know, go to Kirtans and stuff, but you need to find what is my contribution now? How okay. can I, and I'm, I, I feel grateful. And you need your so a lot of people are joining this uh, podcast on a regular basis, and they feel like this is my tribe. I got to show up for my tribe, and just having that keeps us connected. Hmm. Because the material world is making so many other attractive offerings, and it's like broken glass. It seems tiny, and then you grab it, and it slices you up. Ouch! Don't go there. You know what else you have to find? What? Sweet baby Krishna. And you know how you find him, Raghunath? How do you find sweet baby Krishna? I've been looking for him. You follow the butter footprints. Ooh, follow the buttery <laughs> footprints. That's a <laughs> takeaway today. Right. Follow those buttery footprints. 